Now, what uh, does it mean that hope does not disappoint? What does it mean that hope does not disappoint? As written in the book of uh, Romans chapter 5 verse 5. Now, in the book of Romans chapter 5, the Apostle Paul explains some of the marvelous benefits of being justified. Uh, justification for those who don't know it is basically being declared righteous okay in god's sight but what does it mean when he says hope does not disappoint let me read to you uh the book of romans 5 5 it says and hope maketh not ashamed because the love of god is shed abroad in our hearts by the holy ghost which is given unto us hmm. hope maketh not ashamed hope does not disappoint the full verse like i've shown you is uh, telling us about something to do with disappointment hope does not disappoint in the context the apostle paul explains that we have peace with god through our lord jesus christ we already have peace in romans chapter 5 verse 1 says therefore being justified by faith we have peace with god through our Lord Jesus Christ. And because of that, we stand in His grace and we rejoice, looking forward to the unveiling of His glory. Right? Let me read to you uh, Romans 5.2. It says, By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So, friends, as we look forward in hope and anticipation, we can even rejoice in our tribulations. Have you ever rejoiced in your tribulation? Or do you get disappointed? Because the Bible tells us we can even rejoice in our tribulation. Like Romans 5.3 says, And not only so, but we glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation works patience. There's a, there's a, there's a payment, there's a crown, Whenever you go through uh, persecutions and tribulations, there's a crown waiting for you in heaven. For every time you go through tribulation and you pass through, and I, and I believe that's why the apostles, um, they rejoiced so much whenever they, were, uh, they went through persecutions and tribulations because they knew of this. You see, many people don't really understand this and they tend to blame God and ask, God, why is this one going through in, in my life? Why am I passing through this? And they don't know that whenever these things happen to us for the sake of Christ, oh, my friend, we have, we have a crown waiting for us. All right? Sometimes we find ourselves, we, we don't really take joy in the tribulations themselves, but we rejoice in what they accomplish in our lives. And the Apostle Paul uh, lays out the progression of results from the difficulties that we encounter. He says, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance. Does that go clear? And uh, of course, we should encounter hardships. And these hardships, because we are living in the world definitely we are going to encounter hardships and these hardships are going to strengthen us and can also enable us to withstand even more okay another word for perseverance is long suffering and when we encounter tribulations it can help us to uh, suffer long and endure perseverance brings about proven character like the bible says in uh, romans 5 verse 4 it says and patient uh, patience, experience, and experience, hope, right? And the quality of our character is tested in trials. And when we have endured, our character is no longer hypothetical. It is proven. You have been tested and tried and proven. Proven character brings about hope. Character which has been proven brings about hope. Romans 5 4, the second part says, and patient, experience, and experience, hope. Are you seeing those words? 
when you have endured and our character has been tested and shown to be faithful, that one helps us to have a strong hope, not simply just a wish for something, but an anticipation of what we certainly come. Paul adds that uh, hope does not disappoint. Hope does not disappoint. Alright, like uh, he says in Romans 5, 5, And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. So, uh, 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 hope does not disappoint. You have hope in Jesus, then you'll never be disappointed. It will always work. Of course, this hope is uh, hope in the true thing. Don't uh, hope in the wrong things and then you say it will not disappoint you. It may disappoint you, right? But when you hope in the true word of God and the true things that Christ told us because his word is true, then you'll never be disappointed. Hope does not put us to shame. And that kind of hope is certain because it relies upon God's power, his promises, and his sacrifice. Let me read to you uh, the book of Romans 5, 6 to 11. It gives us a, a clear picture of this kind of hope. Okay? It tells us, For when we, when we were yet without strength, that is you and me, we were without strength. In due time, Christ died for the ungodly. It's just like children who did not know where they are heading. They are lost in the streets. Christ died picked them up and said, okay, let me adopt you. Let me adopt you. Just believe in me and you become my children. Don't run away. I've already done, organized everything for you. While you were still yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly, for the scarcely, for a righteous man will one die. Yet pre-adventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commended his love towards us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when you were enemies, we were reconciled to God by death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not, not, not only so, we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we now have received the atonement. The Bible is very clear here. It is telling us, imagine if Jesus died for us when we were still sinners. He died for us. That kind of love that he did, he showed us, he died for us while we were yet sinners. Don't you think that Right now that we are already saved, he's going to save us from the wrath to come, the tribulation which is coming. Is he not faithful enough to save us? Absolutely he is. He's going to save us. He cannot waste his energy, waste his time, waste his blood dying for us. And now while we have received him, while we are already saved, we go through wrath. It's not going to happen. He's going to give us his life. He actually, he has already given us his life. We're just waiting to be redeemed. All right? It's not, not, not by our own merits. No, by his merit. And that kind of hope is certain because of what he has accomplished. Not because of any work on our part. Because Christ died for us. It's not about our work. Jesus died for us. All right? Romans 5, 8, it says... But God commanded his love towards us that while we were yet sinners, while you and me were still sinners, Christ died for us. We have been justified. We will be delivered from future wrath of God. Friends, we understand that we are not saved based on our own righteousness. It was not because we were good or we tried doing something to be saved. Rather, we were reconciled, given peace with God, even while we were still enemies of God. While you are still enemy, when you still hated God, when you didn't know, God saved you still. He died for you at that time. And so, we will be saved by his life because right now, we've got his life. And while each one of us will encounter difficulties, even tribulations or trials, 
Paul helps us to uh, recognize that those circumstances are part of God's recipe for our growth. In the book of James, chapter 1, verse 2 to 4, it says, Hope does not disappoint. And of course, James offers a similar exhortation. He says, Consider it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Endurance produces perseverance, and perseverance it is basically a way of testing your faith. Being put on some weight and, and seeing, is it true that this person really loved Jesus? I'm not saying you can lose your salvation, but I'm, just think about Job. He went through trials, tribulations. But this test, this test proved his love for God. Even when God was uh, giving him seven times more, he definitely knew that Job loved him. We won't say that uh, we'll get uh, seven more times uh, things here on earth, but in heaven, there's a promise that we'll get things seven more times, even more than seven, because we're going to inherit everything that Jesus in, inherited from the Father is going to be ours also. Is that not much than uh, just seven times of what Job had? Trials and difficulties are designed to produce in believers an eternal benefit. It is for this reason that the Bible says that hope does not disappoint, that we can and we should rejoice always. The book of uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.16 says, Rejoice evermore. Are you rejoicing? Are you crying? because of different persecutions and different trials and tribulations. It helps to have an example of uh, how hope does not disappoint. And Paul provides such an example for us in Philippians chapter 4 as he explains that he has learned how to be content in any circumstance. He can deal with the humble means of uh, or prosperity. He can deal with being filled or being hungry. He can deal with having much or suffering need. Whether in good or bad circumstances, Paul had learned to persevere because he recognized that he can do all things through him who strengthens us. Philippians 4.13 I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And the same one who strengthened Paul to have that kind of contentment and courage uh, uh, strengthens us also. And that man is Jesus. And working all things together for our good, that is his core business. He's trying to work everything for our good. Romans 8.28 And of course, that ultimate good is that we be more like Christ because it is his power at work. We know that his kind of hope does not do what? Does not disappoint. When you hope in Christ, you will never, never be put to shame. And that's the end of our today's Bible study lesson. Hope it is a blessing to you. Hope you did learn something. And remember, you can always download this podcast to listen later offline or to share to your friends and family. And please don't forget to favorite our podcast and subscribe to our channel so that you can always be notified whenever we post a new Bible study lesson. And if you'd like to get saved or you need uh, to get a step-by-step -step Bible verses on the order of salvation so that you can well preach to your friends or family, or maybe just feel led to support our ministry or to buy some cool Christian merchandise, kindly visit our website, keithwalkie.com for more details and breakdown. Otherwise, I hope to see you soon in the next one.